Hello everyone and welcome back to another fabulous episode of the Noob Game Programming Documentary. I am Hans Nalo as usual and um, I want to show you what little updates I've made for my uh, for the game so far. And um, what better way to do that than to show you the, uh, how it's running so far. Maybe I should cut this part out, I'm not sure. Um, here we are. So, it looks a lot like last time. Um, we have some... Yeah, the black square has grown a, a bit taller, I think. And... Uh, I'm saying uh so much. Sorry about that, sorry about all the uhs. I'll try not to do it. We have red rectangles now, and these are enemies, but they're not really enemies yet. So far they're just bloggers. And then you might have noticed a small blue circle that is showing up in the direction of the pointer. That basically just shows which direction you're moving. For example, if I have my cursor here before and you had no small blue circle, it would be difficult to know which direction you're going to move. Now you'll know for sure. When you have your cursor, you'll know which direction you're going to move in. Now I have one small problem that is that I can move to this square here, but I can't see the cursor when it's there. Um, not because it's not there, I just think that the red rectangle is drawn above it. Because you see, if I go up you might be able to see the blue circle actually is showing through the black square. But here it's not supposed to show because you can't move here, so it doesn't show. Likewise, it doesn't show when you hover over the edge of the map. So that's it. That's the improvement I've made. But I've also actually, I have two instances of the program running because I want to show you what I've changed in the code. And uh, we'll start by the global left press that I talked a lot about last time. Let's start by opening that. And you'll see this This was the code that I showed you last time. And um, I said um again. Damn it. Well, let me show you what it looks like now. There. That's what happens when we press the left mouse button. Uh, it basically just tests that there's a collision at these variables um, and then sets the movement to go if there's no collision. I've moved the rest of, it, the rest of it into step. So now that's all here. This one is exactly the same that was in the global um, global left click before but now it does it all the time because I wanted to update the blue circle even when I'm not clicking the mouse button that's basically the purpose of it to update it before I click the mouse button so I can see where I'm going to end up and then we have the um, yeah this is where I, I set the var, the selector x and the selector y. And we just use that variable back in global left click to test for a collision. Um, this doesn't test for, for a collision at all, it just um, sets it based on the uh, 8 direction. And this one here, where it's moving, that was there before as well. But um, this one is the one that actually moves the player in small increments. This it, every time you click uh, the mouse button to make the player move, it'll move in six. It'll run this one through sixteen times and move it in small increments of either four, two, or one in the x and y directions. Yeah, I feel like I had something else to say. 
Um, no, I didn't want to say um. Yeah, the draw event. I added the um, this line to the draw event. Oh, and I, can't. I did not want to mark it because then you can't read it. Maybe you can't anyway. It depends on the quality of the video. But this line, this new line, when it does this, it tests if we are moving. Um, it should be zero, so we, sh we shouldn't be moving. And we should be in a room that is different from s room zero, because I don't want to show up in the f in the first room, the one that's the start menu. We shouldn't have the circle there. And also that there's not any collision at the point. That was what we were. Yeah, basically, it it I make that check twice. I could probably. Um, make another variable and just check it once uh, but I'll make the collision check at the uh, bar select the x and bar select the y and if there's no collision then we draw this small blue circle and that's it for now maybe I'll talk a bit about what I want to do next um, what I'm really thinking about is how am I going to get my enemies to move these um, three red rectangles. How am I going to get them to move? Now I have some ideas about making them moving in the direction of the player if they're within a certain distance. And I also I'm pretty confident I can program it so it checks if they're uh, further away and then just make them walk randomly. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, I can do that. But what I'm not sure how to do is not make them all walk at the same time. I mean, I want I want the player to be able to take two steps, and then his turn is over, and then became, becomes the AI turn. But the way I've imagined it is, if I just code for the object enemy to move in a random direction or move closer to the player, then they'll all do it at the same time. They will not first take one and that moves and when that's done the next one goes and the third one goes and then the turn switches back to the player. I need some kind of array or queue where I, where I queue up the um, ID numbers and I need to so, sort of select them by ID. Um, I'll have to study a bit about it, um, search in the net search in the manual and the wikis and maybe I'll figure something out. Anyway, that's something for you to look forward to next time and uh, I hope I'll see you there.